Good Saturday afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to another video. And I'm at a different location because this is going to be a book wrap up. <laughs> so I bet you guys were thinking that I was going to film my movies I watched in May, but that'll like come later tonight. But I also got to start on filming for my extreme horror vlog. So I have stuff to do. <laughs> but uh, I thought I'd pop on here real quick to give you guys my thoughts on the 10 books I read in May. Yeah, that's right. I read 10 books. Probably my most productive reading month of the year because I averaged about like uh, seven to eight books a month but this is definitely a good turnaround so if you've seen my wrap-ups I do them in the order that I read them so without further ado let's go ahead and get started the first book I completed in May was First Blood by David Morell and I read this on Audible. This is about John Rambo which was a recently discharged Vietnam vet and he's trying to go back home to like live his life but a sadistic sheriff decides to toy with him and John Rambo is on a one man war. This was a great novel but I do prefer the movie over it. So I did do a book versus movie on this. Check it out if you have any interest. But uh, the book pretty much follows the movie beat for beat. But David Morrell wanted a more dark ending. He wanted Rambo to actually uh, himself because of his PTSD. And Hollywood did not like that at all. But I think he actually did do that in the book. The ending to this book kind of confused me, to tell you the truth. But otherwise, First Blood with Sylvester Stallone is one of my all-time favorite action movies. It's perfect. I love the cat and mouse situation that Rambo is in with all of the police department and stuff and it's just action-packed and it just paints a picture on veteran suicide and PTSD so I gave the book itself four stars but the movie by far is an A plus so if you want more of my thoughts on First Blood I do have a video. Check it out. So moving on, my first Kindle read that I completed was sort of like First Blood, but it's not First Blood. <laughs> there is blood and gore in it, believe me. But that second book is The Warrior Retreat by John Lynch. And uh, this was a pretty disturbing novel. <laughs> but it's essentially about a group of Marines who cope with PTSD and, in a sense, loss. <laughs> but, uh, or whatever. No, he was a sergeant. Yeah. The sergeant in this, 
he wanted to just uh, take his company to a cabin in the woods and just reflect on war. But it gets very deep. One veteran loses it and he starts to uh, brutally murder his brothers in arms. And when I say brutally murdered, there's some very graphic deaths in here. <laughs> but uh, this is one part a character study in veteran distress and another part extreme horror. I thought the first half of this story was very slow. But when it went into, like, the extreme horror vibe, I was there for it. And it's got a very bleak ending. But I rated this four stars. Pretty solid book. Hmm. The next book I read was something completely different. I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. And this was on Audible, and this was just about her uh, abusive relationship towards her mother. So her mother just wanted her to be in showbiz more than anything. She caused her to become anorexic and bulimic and pretty heartbreaking stuff and of course all the behind the scenes action on iCarly and Nickelodeon was explored in there too so definitely a depressing yet heartwarming read oh <laughs> but uh yeah she definitely lived a uh, pretty tragic life but I did rate this five stars y'all are seeing a trend here this month I didn't give anything below four stars so it was a very very good month but moving on my next read complete 180 back in the Horror. <laughs> this is The Boyfriend, Every Parent's Worst Nightmare by D.E. McCluskey. And wow. <laughs> this book was really, really graphic. But there's only like one drawn out sequence of like the sexual abuse but this story takes a turn that totally reminded me of Fear meets Last House on the Left so essentially this dude uh, becomes very enamored with like a 16 year old girl and he just brutally tortures her and rapes her and the father finds out and he just exacts revenge on him. This book took me by surprise. Although it is very dark, it's got a very good payoff in the end. But yeah, it was a really, really messed up book. So I gave this five stars. Moving on from there, I have another Books of Horror Indie Brawl book. How Much To by Matt Shaw. And I read this on my Kindle. And this is... Basically, an extreme horror, truth or dare story. It's just uh, a dark web competition 
that pits contestants against each other. And they had to, like, literally bid on ten horrible, disgusting things that they have to do to themselves or to other people. I'm not going to repeat some of what happens in this book because it is pretty uh, gross. <laughs> but this was definitely the grossest book that I read this month. And uh, it was... I did rate it four stars. I would say that it was good, but I I haven't been a big fan of Matt Shaw, to tell you the truth. He's just uh, gross for the sake of being gross. There's really not a lot of story here. It's just scenario after scenario. And it gets very repetitive very quickly. But I did enjoy the story overall. But I just had to rate it four stars. So, next up is a very short story. I mean, this thing ain't even like 20 pages. The Scampering by Alexa K. Drex and A. W. Mason. I also read this on my Kindle. Not a lot here to discuss. It's just about a, a woman who just exacts revenge on squirrels after the death of her husband. That's literally this whole story. So, she just makes squirrel stew, but then the squirrels just get at her and this really ramps up like in the last five pages the story itself is like 17 pages long so yeah I pretty much blew through this <laughs> and I gave this four stars next was the drowning woman by Robin Harding and I read this on Audible and this was supposed to be in my April TBR but I just didn't get to it so this was a thriller yeah totally different from what I've been reading <laughs> but uh, this is basically like a domestic thriller that featured a homeless woman saving another woman from drowning hence the drowning woman <laughs> but uh the drowning woman was in this abusive uh marriage and she just wanted to get away from her husband turns out this goes in three different perspectives it goes into the homeless woman, the rich woman, and the murder plot with her husband. So her husband wanted her dead anyway, but uh, the person that she falls for turns out to be like a hitman. And uh, the hitman tried to kill both women. It was a pretty solid story, and I rated this four stars. Mm -hmm. Been a while since I read a thriller, and this is definitely one of the most solid ones that I read. And my only physical read that I read this month, I do read physically. <laughs> Mystic River by Dennis Lehane. Yeah, I read that in a month. This is nearly 500 pages. And this was a very, very good story. So this is about three friends who reminisce about the past because one of them got into a car 
and was abducted by uh, pedophiles and he didn't come back right. <laughs> but flash forward 25 years later, this takes place in 2001 and this is about a grieving husband and father who recently lost his daughter. So it is up to uh, the detective, Sean Devine. Yeah. So Sean Devine is the detective character in here, and he has to tell Jimmy Marcus that his daughter died horrifically. So this is just like a crime thriller uh, trying to pick out who killed Jimmy Marcus's daughter. Jimmy Marcus thinks that Dave Boyle murdered her. Well, spoiler alert, Dave was innocent. And it's definitely a very dark ending but essentially and this is like a spoiler like I said there are just like these two kids that accidentally killed Katie the epilogue in here just leaves off Sean Devine trying to hunt down Jimmy Marcus and bring him to jail on the death of Dave Boyle but this was a very, very good book. And it is in the running for mm -hmm. my favorite book of the year. So obviously, I gave this five stars. And this was my favorite book that I read this month. So that was Mystic River. And while I'm on Mystic River... I'm probably going to do like a book versus movie episode on it. So stay tuned for that. I have two more books here. Yes, I squeezed in two more. <laughs> the last audiobook that I read was This Is Where We Talk Things Out by Caitlin Marceau. This was another Books of Horror indie brawl contender so I read three of these things this month <laughs> because the boyfriend was the other one but uh this is a very very short novella it's just under 100 pages I meant that I read this through audible there we go the last story that I'm going to talk about here in a minute was on my Kindle. But back to this. So, this was the story of an estranged mother-daughter relationship. And, holy crap. <laughs> this is basically like Caleb Marceau's vision for misery. Because it has like a snowy setting and it's two characters the mother is crazy she just like lashes out on her for no apparent reason and the ending to this gets extremely dark I'm like okay that escalated quickly <laughs> but uh I did enjoy this story quite a bit and I gave this four stars. I felt like it needed to be a little bit longer. The final and tenth book was Sardines in the Dark, a brutal story by Judith Sonneth. And I did read this on my Kindle, so don't worry about that mess up there. <laughs> but uh, this is only like 68 pages and this was like a slasher a very brutal slasher I might add 
Well, it was about a youth group that spent like a weekend in a camp setting. Well, they decided to play like a little game of hide and seek and there's like a madman on the loose. The deaths in here are very gnarly to say the best. And I really did enjoy this story. But uh, the ending kind of got very religious. But I'm not going to give it away. Well, I guess I can. This dude just like ends up being like an angel. The ending just took me by surprise. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> but uh, this dude just like went all bloodlust towards all these teenagers. But it was a very, very good story. Pretty brutal, but it's Judith Sonnet. She's the queen of splatterpunk. <laughs> but I did rate this five stars and those are the ten books that I read in May had a lot to talk about there didn't I <laughs> so uh, later tonight I'm gonna give you my movies I watched in May so stay tuned for that and really really soon I'm going to start giving some footage for my vlog coming up as soon as like June 10th or 11th, but I definitely do need to get some footage for it, so stay tuned for that. It's definitely going to be a arduous process, <laughs> but that's all I got for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Adios, peace, and welcome June.